Birthdays and anniversaries. Come on up and we'll sing to you. Dewey got a birthday. All right. Now you watch. Sister Myrna, we love it. Did you say what, 21? Sister Verna got a birthday. Gary Tim has a birthday. Do you, you want to come down and let us see what a handsome guy you are? Anybody else with a birthday or an anniversary? Anybody going to tell on anybody? All right, brother. 
Brother Dewey, Sister Myrna, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Started that out 50 some, maybe 60 years ago. And followed through. Happy birthday. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you this morning on this cool winter morning. Amen. Good to see all of you today. If there are any of us visiting for the first time, if you're here with us and you're visiting, you've never been with us before, we want to make you specially welcome. If you just hold your hand up, if you know of anybody visiting for the very first time, if they'll hold their hand up, our ushers have a gift for you. Look around, help me out. Anyone for the very first time? Everybody been here before? And you came back. Thank the Lord. Amen. Good to see you all this morning. Ron's going to lead us in a number. So get a songbook, stand together, and Ron will sing for us. Page 162. It is good to see you, even if it is cold outside. Joy unspeakable. We still got joy in our hearts. And full of glory. Good looking bunch. Are you happy? Less is less than two more. Are you really happy? Has the Lord been good to you? God bless you. There's more back here that the Lord's good to than you think. Sing with us, sing big time. All right, Ronnie Weaver.
and he'll pray for us this morning.
ಎಲ್ಲ ಬರ good for you and it I'll shake you away say so we had a really good trip the lord was there the preaching was good uh the fellowship was fantastic and the weather was cold 22 degrees uh in um I'm not I'm the guy that thinks this is too cold so but we did have a great time uh we missed being with you but thank god fellowship with the lord's people we're the most blessed people i have to i have to tell my kids and tell those that are around about us how wonderful the lord's been to, been to us right. how good he is yes. how good he is thank god and, and to give us all this and then as I always used to say heaven too remember that thank god for the goodness of god and for people that still um still practice the old way and say there thank god that jesus is the only way we're in john we're in the 14th chapter of john where jesus said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the father but, but by that's right there's not many roads not a lot of roads there's one way and jesus is it thank god he saved me as a youngster and i i've tried to follow him and i i highly su- suggest man it is the way to 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 live to raise your kids to make your living put him first all the rest will be added to you all right ronnie Bye. he's given me and um, I'm starting to go to chiropractor now and she's a good Christian woman I got to share I shared with some of them what she told me last Thursday she said well she said 
God has allowed you to live, you know, from the wreck because you're not done here. And she said, and he sent you to me so I can help you get well to fulfill what you've been put on earth to do. And I, I thought, what a blessing, you know, to have a doctor <laughs> tell you yes. that. Yes. And, and then she says, this is what I pray over my patients. She said, I apply the blood of Jesus over Amen. them. Praise Amen. God. Amen. I said, oh, I do that. Yes. <laughs> and she said, oh, what's the other two? There was two more. <laughs> She said, I pray God's word over my patience, and by Jesus' stripes, you're made whole. And I thought, thank you. I almost cried in the office. <laughs> Praise God yeah. that he is answering prayer. And, you know, uh, I've been doing good, great with my arm and all, and God's, I've, I've praised him. I have praised him. And I thank God that my grandson wasn't hurt. And, but, you know, I started having these pains in my neck, pains in my back. And so all I'd do is sit at home on a heat pad. And I thought, Lord, now, I don't think you allowed me to come through all this to suffer the rest of the way. And I said, I need help, Lord. Show me. And God provided this lady, and I'm feeling so much better. And I, I know God hears our yeah. prayers, church. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're in the end times. You know that. And the devil is trying to wear out God's people when your prayers aren't answered. He's wanting you to say, well, you don't hear me. God don't hear you. Yes, he does hear you. He might delay the prayers like he did Daniel. Yeah. We can't give up. We cannot give up. That's what the devil wants you to do. God's been too good to us. And he's blessed us and took care of our families. And we've got too many people out there. It's some on drugs, some on alcohol, whatever. Yeah. But God is greater. He yes. said, greater is he that's within yes. us. And I trust him to bring all those yes. relatives yeah. to the Lord. I yes. trust him that he hears my prayer yeah. and they will be saved. So we can't give up. And we're to encourage one another. And I thank the Lord for his blessings. And as Will said, that really stuck with me when he said, Five of them was ordained, and already two preachers, he don't know where they're at, whether they're even serving God. But see, that's what the devil wants. Oh, yeah. He will throw things. He knows, you. he knows your weakness. He knows your weakness. As Will says, he's not everywhere, but he knows what gets to you. He knows what person to put in your path to make you fall. But you know what? God is greater. God is greater. And I, I'm going to share this. I haven't shared this with anybody, but... It was when I was feeling bad and sitting in my recliner by myself. And this, I felt this spirit trying to come over me. It was fear. And, and I thought, I said, oh, no, devil. I'm not going there. God's brought me too far. And 2 Timothy says, the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. Right. But of power, love. And, and I quoted that. You quote the word That's to the right. devil, he flees. And you know what? It just lifted right back off. But the, there I go with his scripture. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Yeah. He's got to go. Right. He's got to go. You're a child of the living God. Yes. You have to remind him sometimes. And as long as you're living like a child of the living God. But I praise God for his, the prayers that he's answered. I praise him for where he's brought me from and where I'm going. I thank him for saving my soul at five years old. For 65 years, he's yeah. been my pilot. I praise his holy name. Thank him that he's allowed us to be together all these years. You're not just brothers and sisters. We're family. We're the family of God. And when one suffers, we suffer. When they told me that John was sick, I, I prayed for him. I, I felt so bad. I thought, Lord, your people... Our people need you, Lord. Yeah. We need you at this time. We're weak and tired and weary. Some are getting weary. But I praise God for his word. You get in the word. If that don't build you up, something's wrong. I praise his holy name for every blessing he's given. Amen. For saving me, for watching over my family, for blessing us, Lord, that we can come together still free in a country. That's another thing. If we're not humbling ourselves and praying for our country, 
praise his name. He's greater than anything the devil will ever throw at you. You remind him of that. Praise his name. Just a short while And we'll part and we'll not see each other For a year or more at a time But someday when life here is over And all of our troubles are
Amen. Have your Bibles turn to Psalm chapter 103. Psalm 103. Amen. 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 Psalm 103. Amen. Give me a hand. Sure. Stand with us. Psalm 103. Very familiar passage of Scripture. If you're there, say amen. amen. Psalm 103, we begin reading in verse number 1, but we'll be looking throughout the chapter. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for the spirit that we felt. Lord, we thank you for our church, our people, our school, our campus. God, we just thank you that your presence is among us. God, I pray, as Lamar said, Lord, if there are those here, uh, Lord, that, that are, 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 are lost, some are away, uh, maybe, Lord, they lost the joy of their salvation. God, would you just, through your Holy Spirit, move and convict and lead and help us to respond and react to your word and your leading. Be with us this morning for a few moments. Have your way in every heart and life. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. Well, it is that time of year again. I know we're about a week and a half away where we celebrate uh, this holiday called Thanksgiving. Of course, Thanksgiving means different things to different people, doesn't it? Uh, But for most of us, especially in America, I think when we mention the word or the holiday, Thanksgiving, we think of one thing, (laughs) feasting. Come on, speak to me. Amen. We we talk about 88% of Americans surveyed by the National Turkey Federation. It is true, there is a National Turkey Federation. 88% of Americans surveyed will eat turkey on Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving, 46 million poor turkeys. 46 million turkeys will be consumed. One writer said, we stuff ourselves so much that we become couch potatoes and our children become tater tots. The average number of calories consumed on Thanksgiving is 4,500. They said it would take an average person 10 hours to burn that off. Thanksgiving in America is ranked second amongst American holidays. Of course, we know what number one is, Christmas. Uh, One writer said, we gobble till we wobble. Besides turkey, America's favorite dish at Thanksgiving is dressing, followed closely by pumpkin pie. We love to feast. And it's something here in America that when we talk about Thanksgiving, our our first thought is food. But I would remind you, the true meaning of Thanksgiving is just that, being thankful and giving to others. You know, you read in the Bible and in several places it commands us to give thanks. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we learn to give thanks on our own without having to be commanded to give thanks? It was interesting to me to find out that giving thanks is not mentioned in the Old Testament until 1 Chronicles. It doesn't mean that the Israelites were not ever thankful before them, and I'm sure they were. But if you'll remember, the the nation of Israel was 
in, in what we would call the kindergarten stage of life. In the kindergarten stage, you have to teach boys and girls to do certain things. And God was teaching the children of Israel to be thankful. Some of you may remember, we, we have to teach our children today to be thankful. If we're not careful, they will grow up just expecting everything given to them. Amen. Amen. They feel entitled that what yours is mine and what's mine is mine. They want it because man, by nature, is not thankful. For most part, anything that you have to be taught to do is really not a part of your nature. Romans 1.21 one of the saddest verses, it says this, When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. So we must teach our children to be thankful because being thankful and being grateful is not a part of their nature. Some of you remember how you taught your son or daughter to be thankful. Someone gave them something, what would you say? Now what do you say, yeah. right? Yeah, you have to kind of, kind of lead them there. What do you say? And sometimes they won't say that. They'll just bow up and not say anything. And, and after threatening them many times with something, Billy, what do you say? And they finally say, thank you. And we say, that's right. That's what you're supposed to say. We're trying to teach them. I heard about a little boy. A, a lady gave him a piece of apple pie. And the little boy said, thank you. And boy, she smiled and said, oh, I love to see little boys say thank you. He said, oh, yeah, if you put some ice cream on that, I'll say it again. <laughs> Gratitude is not a part of our nature. However, sin is a part of our nature. Amen. Amen. How many of you know you never have to teach your child to do wrong? They can do it on their own. You don't have to teach man or woman to do what is against God and what is rebellious toward God. It's part of our fallen nature. But thankfulness and gratitude, we have to work on that every single day. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. And you're sitting there saying, everything? I mean, you know what happened to me this week? You know what I'm going through this week? How can I do that? Be thankful. Did you know the old Anglo-Saxon word thankfulness comes from a word that means thinkfulness. T-H-I-N-K. Thinkfulness. And that is so true because the more you think about the blessings of God in your life, the more you realize how much you ought to be thankful. So here in Psalm 103... David is going to give us and exalt God in four different areas of his life. And, and these same four things, these same four areas in this passage of Scripture that prompted David to praise God, it should also prompt us to offer up our thanksgiving and our praises to him. So what did David thank God for that we should thank God for as well? Let me give them to you. We'll be finished. Number one. David says we should thank God for his forgiveness. Are you truly thankful that God has totally forgiven you of your sins? Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Notice verse 3. Who forgiveth, how many? All thine iniquities. One of the greatest blessings God ever gave to man is the forgiveness of man's sins. This is the very reason God gave Jesus to us, to forgive our sin, to save our souls from hell. And I would say to you, if you're here this morning and you are unsaved, you are missing out on the greatest thing that can happen in a person's life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he what? He gave his only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Not long before she died in 1988, in a moment of surprising sincerity on television in England, a lady by the name of Marganita Lasky, one of the best known novelists at that time and a devout atheist, she said, what I envy most about you Christians is your forgiveness. She said, I have nobody to forgive me. But the truth is, she did have someone who would forgive her. Jesus would have forgiven her if she'd only trusted in him. Have you done that? 
Have you had your sins forgiven? Have you, have you put your faith in Christ, the forgiveness of sins? This was number one on David's list, and it should be number one on our list. You know, King David knew this blessing personally. If you don't believe me, read Psalm 51 when you get home. David knew what sin was. David knew how it burned inside of him, how it hurt others, and how it condemned himself. He cried out, my sin is ever before me. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities. David knew what it was to confess with heartbreak his sin. And he also knew what it was to praise God to receive forgiveness. So listen to me this morning. I would hope every Christian at this Thanksgiving season would stop and remind themselves not how great the turkey is but how great the blessing of forgiveness of your sin is through Jesus Christ. That because of Christ, you are now cleansed and made right with God, and we should just praise the Lord a while for his forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So number one, David says, thank him for his forgiveness. Then there's a second thing David wants to thank the Lord for. He says, number two, I want to thank him for his healing. The second thing on David's list, a blessing is the healing of the body. John Phillips calls this verse David's hallelujah chorus. Look what he says in verse number three. He says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and who healeth all thy diseases. Now look up here. Do you believe in divine healing? Do you believe that God can heal anyone at any time, any moment in their life. Yes, I certainly do. Absolutely. And I believe that all true healing is from God. Amen. Sometimes God heals through doctors. Yeah. Sometimes God heals without doctors. Sometimes God heals people through medicine. Sometimes God heals people without medicine. True. The Norwegian theologian, his name was Ole Halsby, said this. He said, we should pray, Lord, if it be to your glory, heal suddenly. If it will glorify you more, heal gradually. I thank God that he still heals the sick. I am sure I could name all kinds of people who know that God has heard their cry and lifted them up from beds of sickness. I love this story. I've shared it before. I want to share it again. True story. A lady by Dr. Diane Comp. She's a, a pediatric oncologist. She teaches, she practices at Yale University School of Medicine. And she tells about attending a medical conference where physicians of different disciplines, they exchanged ideas on different tumor cases. And the case at hand that day was that of a, a baby girl who had broken all the rules. This is what she wrote down in her journal and she shared at a conference. She said, I quote, one of the doctors said, are you sure you had the right diagnosis? I've never seen this particular tumor respond that way. You must be wrong. Amen. No, I'm not wrong, responded the somewhat indignant pathologist. I know a tumor when I see it. Yeah. The radiotherapist looking elsewhere for an explanation of the unexplainable turned to the chemotherapist managing the case and said, that chemotherapy must have really done the job then. In which he responded, don't look over here for the explanation. We only use radio sensitizing doses. Besides, the tumor was growing rapidly through the last course of different drugs. Are you sure it wasn't the radiation therapy that did the job? No way was his answer. This tumor's never gone away like that before. He turned to the radiologist who had interpreted the scans and said, are you sure those are the right films? Yes, they're the right x-rays. You can tell from the comparisons of the old ones, it's the same child, only now the tumor is completely gone. Radiotherapist said, it doesn't make sense to me. I just don't understand it. After hearing all this conversation take place, Dr. Diane Comp wrote in her journal these words. Yeah. Minutes of this conference simply reflected the lack of a known medical explanation for the disappearance of this tumor. Yeah. However, 
The medical records did not reflect other activities that were going on behalf of this little girl. She said teams from a local church had been fasting and praying daily for little Bethany two by two. She said many other family and friends prayed for her tumor to go away. And what could not have been explained through medical science can be explained by the healing power of an omnipotent God. I thank Jesus that he still heals diseases. Jesus Christ heals. And David thanks the Lord for that. Then he moves on to number three. And David says, I thank him that he preserves our lives from death. Look at verse 4. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. When's the last time that you thank God for protecting your life day by day by day? Some of you should not be here today. Some of you were in terrible accidents. Some of you were rushed to hospitals not knowing what would happen. Yet God intervened and he spared your life. Have you thanked him for it today? I thought sometimes we worry so much about the days ahead of us that we don't take the time to enjoy this present day that he's blessed us with Thank you, Lord. right now. Thank you, Lord. Or that we don't praise him for the past days that he's brought us through. Yeah. You know what we do a lot of times? We think about what's coming up yeah. and it messes up our day today. Why don't we just thank him today for what he's done for us in our lives? It's a wonderful teaching found in the scripture, Psalm 34, 7. The Bible says, The angel of the Lord encamps around about him that fear him and delivereth them. Listen, I believe God's guardian angels protect Christians every single day. Of the angels, we are told in Hebrews 1, verse 14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them who shall be heirs of salvation? When is the last time you thank God for sending his guarding angels to protect you, to protect your children and looking after you? When's the last time? See, I believe that God has a time for Christians to die. Okay? God has a time. I do not believe that Satan can bring one of God's children to death without God's consent. You may remember the story. God allowed Satan to bring great trouble to Job. But Satan could not touch his life unless God said so. You know what? I love this. Remember this. God has Satan on a leash. God has Satan on a leash. And Satan can do nothing unless God gives him permission to. So God preserves, God protects the lives of his saints. Now, do I believe Satan so hates us that he would destroy every Christian he possibly could right now? Absolutely. Did he not hate Jesus? Did did he not put in the heart of Herod to kill all the little boy babies of Bethlehem two years old and under? Did he not put into the heart of the Pharisees again and again to try and stone Jesus? Did he not stir up the people of Nazareth to try to toss Jesus over the ledge and kill him? Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was sorrowful in his soul. The Bible says, even unto death. I believe Satan would have had Jesus die right there at the wrong place in the wrong time. But his life was spared. Until Calvary, when Jesus could die in the will of God. But understand something. Satan, who hated Jesus, hates every one of us this morning who loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan would delight to have every one of us die right now if it were up to him. But we will not die until God says, it's your time to die. Our sovereign God will care of us until he says it's time to bring them home. The Bible says here in verse 4 that God redeems our life from destruction. We should thank God every day that his care never ceases. 
We sleep, we work, we play with never a thought that all around us are God's protecting host of angels. Take joy in that today. Thank God for that today. Thank Him He preserves our lives from death. Let me give you David's fourth and final blessing that he's thankful for. Up to now, David has thanked God for his forgiveness. David has thanked God for healing diseases. David has thanked God for protecting our lives. Then number four, David thanks God for crowning his life with good things. Just good things. Look in the middle of verse four. He says, Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth, with good things. Now it's amazingly clear as we really begin to count our blessings that all of these blessings are greater than money can buy. Yeah. You, may, you may thank God for whatever prosperity He has given you, but I want to assure you, money and wealth are not the greatest of blessings. Notice they're not even named in these four wonderful gifts summed up in our text in Psalm 103. God has something far greater for our happiness and welfare than wealth and materialism. See, sometimes our schedules get so busy that our frantic pace keeps us from counting our blessings. We get so busy, we forget what God's done for us, and what God's brought us through. What are some of the blessings that, some of the good things that God has crowned your life with today? If you're saved, are you not thankful for faith in Jesus Christ? Yes. I'm thankful that I'm a child of God. I'm thankful I don't have to go to sleep tonight and worry about going to a devil's hell when I die. Are you not thankful for that today? Yes. I'm thankful that the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me from all my sin. Yes. He's crowned us with many blessings. I'm thankful for this church. I'm thankful to be part of a congregation of people who love the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to move, try to lead others to Jesus. I'm thankful for a church where people love and care and are concerned about one another. I'm thankful for a church family. Listen, he's placed a crown on our head. When I think of our church family, he's given us good things. I'm thankful for my family. You're not thankful for your family. It's a crowning jewel in our lives. He's blessed us. I have a Christian wife. I have two healthy girls. I thank God I have a roof over my head. It's cold outside. I'm glad I had a bed to sleep in last night. I don't live in a mansion. I'm proud I have a house with two bathrooms. Thank the Lord. Got three girls in my house. Thank God for two bathrooms. What loving kindness and tender mercy has God poured upon your life? What good things has our loving God crowned your life with? Whatever it may be, have you thanked Him for it? Think of all the blessings you have right now, just right now. Ten years ago, if somebody would have told you you'd have what you had right now, or He's brought you through what you never thought you'd come through right now, you wouldn't have believed Him. Some of you are holding babies and grandbabies you never knew you'd have. Have you thanked him? Some of you received great reports from doctor's offices. Have you thanked him? Some of you shouldn't be alive, but God has prolonged your life. Some of you received that job you didn't think you'd get. Some of you have been saved that you, you weren't saved 10 years ago. Have you thanked him for it? God has been so wonderfully good to us. He's crowned us with good things. We live in a free country. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ without fear of harassment or death. Have you thanked Him for it? I don't know about you, but last week I, I was blessed by Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Dan as he spoke to everyone. Just a humble guy. I, lo I love Dan Brewer. And I was really blessed that, that he was talking about our Vietnam veterans. Do you remember that? And he showed the video. And, and when he showed that video, I thought of this story I want to share with you. He, during the Vietnam conflict, two fine Christian parents in Kansas, they received word that their son had been killed in the war. 
And it was a difficult experience to go through. Their boy was only 19 years old. However, they decided that they would honor the memory of their son by giving a, a sizable donation to their church in his name. Sometime later, the pastor of the church was telling the congregation about how that donation had really relieved some of the financial burdens and difficulties that the church was experiencing. There was a mother in the congregation who whispered to her husband. She said, let's give a sizable check for our boy who served in Vietnam too. And the husband said, what are you talking about? Our boy didn't lose his life in Vietnam. And the wife said, oh, that's just the point. Let's give it as an expression of our gratitude to God for sparing his life. George Herbert prayed, Our Father, Thou hast given us so much things. Do please give us one more thing, a grateful heart. And church, that's what we need today. A grateful heart that will be filled with overflowing each and every day with thanksgiving. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to ask you again. What is Thanksgiving to you? What is, what is Thanksgiving to you? This morning as Christians, we ought to come to God and say, God, because you've blessed me in every way, I will never to forget to praise your name. That God, I will get up out of my seat. I will come to an altar just to say, God, you have been so good to me. I just want to respond to all that you blessed me with. I wonder if there's anyone here this morning and you have something to thank God for. Oh yeah. I think it'd be all right today to get out and come and thank God. Not to ask for one thing, not to ask for one thing, just to get out to say, thank you, God, for blessing me, for giving me things I didn't deserve, for bringing me through things I never thought I'd get through. But today, God, all I want to do is thank you. Yes, I think that'd be all right today to thank God. God, we love you. We thank you. Lord, there are so many things that we go through our lives that we're in right now that we forget the blessings of our past. We forget the blessings that we're in right now. Thank you, Lord. So God, we just want to lift holy hands and say thank you, Jesus, for healing me. Thank you, Jesus, for providing for me. Thank you, Jesus, for protecting me. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we stand together, if you need to come, would you come? Sing this old song. Oh, the things that, that I love. Oh, and oh, dear. My heart are just born. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Jesus, only let me. If you're being baptized today, if you'll go ahead and make your way up to the baptist.
Cracker Barrel, and whatever you do at Cracker Barrel is pretty good. And so there were 35, at least 35 men there. I'm telling you, I was so encouraged. Good looking folks, and I'm telling you, uh, there are at least that many more that didn't come. I know some forgotten, some had, there's always something to do, there is. But uh, next time around, if we get any more, we're going to have to get another place or something. But it, it really was tremendous. It was sweet and it was good. We're waiting on these. Do that. Give me that D there, amigo. Oh, shall we 
gather at the river when bright angel feet is dry with its first to tide forever going from the throne of God. Oh yes! All of you gather with the saints that flow What do you know? Old, and I've gotten to speak to all these. It's, it's always exciting to have baptisms when they're all kids. Yes. Uh, and so we got to speak to them and tell them that uh, this right here is a symbol uh, of an outward or an inward relationship with Jesus Christ and that they are coming today and they are going to show all of you that they are not ashamed that they are Praise a follower the Lord. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They all agree. They are ready to be baptized. And uh, when we put them down, it's a picture of putting Jesus into the grave. When we raise them up, it's a picture of bringing Jesus out yeah, of the grave. Thank so we God. explain that to all of them. And Luke's four, he's been saved. We thank uh, God for him God and his family. Would you pray with me? Lord, we love you. Lucas. We thank you for Lucas. Thank you that he has uh, put his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that he has wanted to come and give this outward expression of this inward relationship he has with you. So today, we baptize our brother in the name of the Father. Of the Son ah, and of the ah. Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes. Together at the river. It's a beautiful view. Together with those saints. And those. This is Isabella. Luke is a sister. She, too. Wow. Her faith and trust thank in the you, Lord. Lord. Jesus Christ. She was a little nervous, but she said she's ready to do it. God, in front of all of you, she has accepted Jesus as her Savior. Lord, we love you. We thank you for Isabella. Uh, thank you that she, too, has put her faith and her trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless her, sweetheart. Today, God, we baptize you, God. our sister in the name of the Father and the Son yes. and the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Go together, Dad. God bless Christ. you, buddy. We want to follow in biblical baptism. Heart. We love Gavin and appreciate his decision to follow Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you for Gavin. Thank you that he, too, has put his <laughs> faith and trust in the Lord Jesus thank Christ. Thank you, Lord. And today we baptize our brother in the name of the Father, Amen. And the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank God. Oh, yes. Gather up. Yeah. Uh, Chase goes and gets the bottles of water and puts them under the pulpit for Bless the preachers. Bless him. Yeah. So that's his ministry. <laughs> we love Chase. Appreciate him. Bless him, Lord. He's accepted Jesus Christ as yes. his personal Savior. God the bless him. And biblical baptism. I did want to tell you, I asked Charlie to help me because Charlie and Doris have all these kids in Bless their you, uh, junior church. Yeah. And we appreciate them. God, we love you. We thank you for, for Chase. Thank you for his love for you and that he wanted to follow yes. in biblical baptism. So today we baptize our brother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Things. What are we doing? Are we ready to go home? What do you have for lunch? Yeah, crap. <laughs> God bless you. What a good day, a good message. We're thankful for the goodness, thankful for you. It's good to see you. Good to be in the Lord's house. 
good to have those uh, that are coming in for the wintertime. You want to stand? We'll be dismissed. <laughs>